Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 1, Cells as the Basis of Life. This is video number 11 and it's probably the most important biology video you will ever see. What we've been doing up to this point is we've been looking at some of the ways in which material moves into and out of cells. And if we've looked at passive processes like diffusion and osmosis and also active processes um, like those involving uh, ATP or exocytosis and endocytosis. But the real critical concept in biology is this whole idea of surface area to volume ratio. Uh, sometimes it's referred to mathematically as the square cube law and there is a little bit of mass that goes with this particular video so I'll apologize in advance uh, but I'm sure you'll be fine you'll cope with uh, what we need to look at. The key to this is that so many structures, whole organisms and structures within the structures in organisms uh, owe their whole existence and their uh, efficacy to this concept of surface area to volume ratio. So let's have a look at it. So the question to ask is why are cells so small? It's one of those things every time we want to look at cells, we have to get the microscopes out because they're teeny tiny things. We don't, we don't get puppy dog sized cells that we can study. They're tiny. Why are they so small? Well, the reason that they're so small is because there's a level of efficiency that once it's passed, means that the cell can no longer function effectively. So um, size relates to efficiency of exchange. And that's the critical thing here. And size doesn't just relate to efficiency of exchange when we're thinking about something like a ball, like a cell. Uh, and of course, one of the things that, that we um, have looked at here is to change the cell from being more of a spherical, ovoid kind of thing to something that's a cube. Uh, and that's deliberate just because it's easy to understand the numbers if we do it that way. Um, and we could just as easily do it with a sphere, um, but it just means that the numbers are a little more complex. And I don't want you to worry about the numbers. I want you to worry about the concept because the concept, as I said at the beginning, is the, one of the most critical ones in biology. The most important thing is the surface area affects the amount of exchange which can occur across the cell membrane. And what makes sense is that as you get bigger, you get more surface area. So larger cells have larger surface areas. So this sounds like a good start. If we want ex material exchange to cross the surface, then being bigger is good because we have a bigger surface area. But the problem is that as objects get bigger, like cells get bigger, their surface area gets bigger, but their volume also gets bigger and a larger volume. And it's this larger volume that's the problem because the rate of increase of surface area is not as great as the rate of increase of volume. And what that means is that the surface area to volume ratio gets smaller. Now, what is this surface area to volume ratio that I keep talking about? Well, here's the easiest way to think about it. If you look at a cube that is a one by one um, by one cube, so each of these sides is a one by one uh, square, so therefore six sides in a cube, we've got six ones, which is six units for our surface. Now obviously if it's in centimetres, it would be six centimetres squared. The, the size of these doesn't matter because it's the concept that's important, and in any case when we're looking at the ratios, we'd cancel those out. Um, and just look at what the ratios are. Now for the volume, we get one times one times one, which is one. So therefore, if we look at the ratio of surface area to volume for a tiny cube, uh, we get six here. And that's six to one, which is six. If we double the size of this cube, you can see what happens to the surface is if we go twice as big, so now we're going two by two by two, We've actually got a surface area of 24. 
Now the surface area of 24 is four times bigger. It's four times bigger than our original cube. But the problem with the volume is the volume is now two times two times two, which is not three, but eight. So the volume is now eight times bigger. So while the surface area has got four times bigger, the volume has got eight times bigger. And what that means is that when we look at a ratio of surface area to volume of 24 to eight, we end up with a three to one ratio. So we've actually halved our surface area to volume ratio. And you can see if we continue to go up and if you want to play with the maths, um, you know, make yourself some 10 by 10s and see what happens there. But um, it, it's not necessary to be able to, to draw all these different shapes and work out all these surface areas to volume. The concept is the key here. And you can see now if I make the surface area bigger again, I make them three by threes. I've now got three threes and nine. So I've got six sides, all of nine square, whatever they are. And that means I've got a total surface area of 54. So you can see this idea of cells getting bigger, have a bigger surface area. There's no problem with that. We've increased the size of the surface area. But now the volume is three times three times three or three cubed, which is 27. So unfortunately, the the ratio of surface area to volume, which is 54 to 27 now is two to one. So whilst I have an object that's three times as big as my initial one, it's only a third the surface area to the available volume. Now surface area is important for exchange. We've got to get material into the cell. We've got to get nutrients. We've got to get particular gases. And we've also got to get material out of the cell. Again, maybe uh, gases produced from processes that we don't want, waste products um, from metabolic processes that we don't want in the cell. All of those have to be moved backwards and forwards across the cell membrane. The problem that we have is the greater the volume, the more nutrients and gases and wastes are going to be exchanged. And therefore, we need to have an efficient system in order for that to happen. And unfortunately, as these cells get bigger and bigger, the surface area available for that exchange compared to the volume gets smaller and smaller. And therefore, cells become less efficient as they get larger. You can see that we've gone through the mathematics of this. So when we give bigger cells, both surface area and volume will increase. So we know that both of them will increase, but the ratio is what goes down. So the surface area to volume ratio is the thing that goes down. Proportionately less surface area. And this means that cells are gonna actually reach a size where they are just no longer efficient enough to continue to um, survive or to continue to be able to live. They're going to have their, um, their demands not fully met. And of course, this is often a trigger for a cell to start to undergo the process of cell division. But that's something for another, that's something for another day. The point is that cells, and cells will grow until this critical ratio of surface area to volume um, reaches a critical point where they can no longer function properly. What's really interesting when we look at surface area to volume is it's not just a phenomena that we can associate with cells, even though it's probably easiest to think of them, um, to think of the implications of surface area to volume in relation to cells, particularly cells that are all shaped like cubes, um, which oversimplifies the problem, but still gives us um, some numbers to play with. But you can see when we start to look, red blood cells have a thin, flat, cellular shape. They don't have a nucleus and they're all about exchange. They're all about getting as much oxygen as they can, picking it up from the lungs, taking it to the cells uh, and then releasing that oxygen so that it's available for processes like respiration. Um, nerve cells are wonderful cells, very long axons they have and also very long and thin dendrites that allow that sort of maximum surface area, maximum contact to be able to pick up those chemical messages and then send them through electrical signals from one part of the body to the other. Nerve, our nervous system is critically important to our response system, to keeping ourselves safe. So we have a number of different systems that activate very, very quickly. Um, 
if things are very hot, if things are very sharp, if objects are moving very close to our eyes, we need to make sure that our bodies respond very quickly so we can move out of the way, or we can take our hand off something that's hot, we can remove it from something that's sharp. All of these things need to be able to respond absolutely instantaneously and our system takes advantage of the surface area to volume ratio in order for that to happen. And also epithelial cells in the small intestines also have extensions. You can see the difference between a surface that looks like this and a surface that looks like this. Is going to cover a similar sort of space, but those extra projections are creating huge increase in surface area, which means you get so much more exchange that can occur between these different surfaces than just across this flat surface here. Our lungs are like this too. Our lungs have little tiny alveoli, like little grapes, that again massively increase the surface area for exchange between the lungs and the capillaries, the blood system that's just in behind the lungs. So this whole idea of surface area to volume is a critical concept in biology. It's one we will come back to a lot, and it's certainly one that we'll want to see you talk about um, during your responses to different uh, questions, because it's the key to so much uh, of the structure and then linking into the function of biological systems. Thanks for watching.